Good afternoon everybody, welcome to this week's weekly market analysis, the 10th of April 2017. Before we get started, as always, please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Alright, so let me get started straight away. Let me post up <coughs> what the upcoming uh, news events, the most impacting that are occurring this week, what they are. Let's talk a little bit about what's happened, what might happen. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in <coughs> and I will try and get to them uh, before the session is over. Alright, so first of all, starting off, Friday, we had non-farm payrolls. Uh, it was somewhat, as a very strange non-farm payroll because it was almost overshadowed by a lot of other things that were occurring on the same day. Um, one, the first being uh, the US-Syria uh, missile attack. Uh, so that's a, definitely affected the markets, it spooked investors and the other major event that was occurring on, on Friday was the US-China summit. Now the non-farm data in itself was relatively on the weaker side okay um, but the net effect was the US-China summit was actually quite good, it was, it was quite positive um, Mr. Trump, uh, everything that was said was, was good um, and basically it was a lot of optimism in moving forward so that was a very, very pro thing. The missile attack uh, moved money towards safety okay so when we have volatile times the US dollar uh, is seen as a bit of a safe haven so a lot of money moved towards the US dollar which basically meant even though the non-farm payroll news wasn't relatively strong it was still supported because so much money moved uh, to the US dollar as a safe haven. So what does that mean for us in this week ahead that we are about to embark on? Well pretty much we have to still remember that the data itself was weak. Okay, So all eyes now are, are really to see what's the next bit of the US data that comes out and, uh, and it, the dollar could really suffer from it if the numbers don't support it this time around. So the big events you can see <coughs> towards the end of the week Oops, in this area down here, we have all this US uh, news. So we have the consumer sentiment, CPI, retail sales, uh, are the, the heavy ones. We have oil inventory, so this is more for the CAD, <coughs> to be honest. And tomorrow morning we have uh, Miss Yellen speaking. So these are the highlights for the US dollar, things to look out for. Uh, but specifically, the last session of the week <coughs> is the one that could move the market the most. If we move along, let's focus on the Canadian dollar for, for a moment. Uh, the reason being is the Canadian dollar has got its monetary policy uh, announcements. And that's due on Thursday. Um, the only major difference this month compared to the last time they made their monetary policy is that this time it's going to be accompanied by the statement uh, from Mr. Pollot. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they say. Uh, the Canadian dollar did receive some relatively strong data just on Friday, so this is really the next uh, major news since that, so let's see how, it, how the market takes it and, um, and what happens there. So also there it is, that's the, the BOC uh, press conference. And the other one that can affect the Canadian dollar a, uh, a little bit is the oil inventories which I already pointed out, where are they? Oh, it's just slipped my, I'll see it in one second, it's probably staring at me in my face. Okay, so the oil inventories as well. Alright, so if we take a closer look to, closer to home, this week we have, on the Aussie dollar we have labour data um, and China trade balance, so there's the China trade balance and here is the labour data, so the unemployment change over there. So these will be the, the highest impacting, that's towards the, the back end of the week and um, it has a little bit of a special flavour this week because we have heard from the RBA recently expressed concerns about the labour market in Australia so all of a sudden these unemployment numbers are really under the microscope right now and uh, and they will have an impact on our own Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar last week had a relatively 
uh, down week and as we ended very close to that 75 mark and it's lost quite a lot of ground we'll have a look at that when we see our charts uh, finally if we look at the sterling um, we have a bit of sterling data this week but the main thing and this one as well the CPI the main thing that we need to take out from uh, the pound is that the effects of moving out of the EU and the triggering of the Article 50 are now starting to be seen. It wasn't as dramatic as we thought. On the plus side, it's triggered for us two great trades. And um, so as the pound continues to lose momentum, it's very much now data dependent. And let's see what will happen uh, this particular week. I think this particular week, based on the data the magnitude of the data that's going to come out, probably the two pairs that are going to be the affected the most is going to be our own Aussie dollar, okay, which has got the Aussie impact plus the USD impact. Actually, this will be the pair that will be affected the most just based on pure uh, data alone. Okay, any questions, please type them in. Let me uh, move on and I just want to do a quick little segment on the trading challenge for those of you who are there uh, or thereabouts. Let's have a look what's been happening on the trading challenge. I think we've triggered now seven trades. <coughs> Let's have a look. All right, so I'm tracking method one and method two. The last trade to trigger was last week. Uh, we placed a pending, um, we placed this order here, the GBP, and basically based on method one, which means uh, I'm going two to one, meaning I'll hit the two reward or I'll get stopped out. Um, this trade has actually hit the first target. What I have done, I'm a little bit sort of, uh, I actually don't, I can't really explain it. Perhaps I've broken a trading rule, I don't know. But what I've done, the trade is still open, but because I've hit T1, the trade's up about 115 pips or something, I can't remember. Um, I have moved my stop to break even. So the worst that I can do on this trade is a zero dollar trade, okay? The best that I can do would be a $500 trade if the trade continues to fall and hit my second target. Does that make sense uh, to everybody? And the only reason that, that, that I've done it, it just feels that this, this week's a little bit, I don't even, can't even explain, it just feels a little bit funny for me. Uh, we've hit T1 and uh, I don't really want to leave anything on the table for this one. I'm happy to get stopped out at zero, um, but uh, that's what I've done. Does that make sense? Everybody's clear on that? And if you on the on my website, I've made a note there that basically explaining what I've done. Okay, all right. So method two. So that's method one. Method two. Essentially, they're all the same trades. The only difference here is that when I hit T1, I am closing out half of the position, moving the stop to break even, which is what I've done up here, and then waiting for the T2 target. So this final trade here, the GBP USD short, we've already locked in a profit of 125 and my second target is open. The worst that can happen is I get zero here and I lock in 125. So I've already locked in this amount of profit based on method two. Okay, so that's the latest. Let's, I'll, I'm, obviously I'm still looking for trades every day. And um, I think 13 trades to go. Let's see what happens. And um, we carry on. Does anybody have any questions on uh, on the challenge or anything like that? Please just type them in. All right, let me bring my charts forward. The questions just popped up. Let me read it and I'll bring my charts forward. Okay, someone's asking me about... Aussie dollar, uh, do I feel that we are at a support level? All right, let's just analyze this right now because this is what I'm up to right now. Okay, last week I drew uh, this line, remember? One of the beauties of keeping your lines on your chart, it instantly, when you look at that chart, it reminds you of what your thought process was the last time that you looked at that chart. So I can see by that line that I was thinking possibly this could do this. That's what I was thinking it could do. Um, 
it did not and the great thing is there is no price action setups there anyway so me taking a trade there the, there's zero chance that I was going to take a, a trade on that one okay and this is one of the reasons that you don't just simply trade because you're close to a line all right lines can be wrong and, and they can be uh, moved around now it's broken through and what I'm noticing now is a little bit of a, a flaw over here and this is the question that just got asked so let me just first of all let me get rid of this line now I don't need it anymore I'll keep that top one up there just to remind me just in case I don't see that there is a double top there but let me just zoom out and instantly what I do like is I'm liking this area here okay so this is definitely something that I like um, in the past this level has acted as uh, resistance it's broken through and it's acted as support so the question now is will it act as support again that's the question so I believe that's what uh, Hubert was asking me when he typed in his question so the answer is yes I do think we are at support does that mean that I can trade it just because we're at support yes or no what's the answer guys can I trade this just because I'm there right now okay good so the answer technically is no unless you're unless your trading plan says if I'm at su support I trade it if you trade if your plan says that then fantastic okay but for me I I need some kind of confirmation I want to see that there is um, a better reason than just me taking a trade okay so I look the only disappointing thing about the current candle is that I don't think I'm going to get the, the candle patterns that I'm looking for. But let's let me try and draw out what I wish happens or what I would like to happen. Okay. Um, possibly, let's say it's got a little bit of a wick which goes a little bit below the support. I understand that. Um, or actually a better one would be more like this I'll draw it in blue let's pretend it's like this and we have it like this okay and tomorrow I get another candle over here and then I get the break pushing in that direction that's a little bit hard to see let me just switch colors so what I'm trying to say is this candle goes up today maybe gives me a bit of a wick this little wick stays down there tomorrow's candle is inside it and Wednesday we break through okay this is the best scenario we are at the correct spot unfortunately we cannot pick up a trade tomorrow unless unless this candle goes way over like that and becomes an engulfing candle and then tomorrow morning you can trade it in that direction okay so does everybody understand the two scenarios I could either get the engulfing candle which is what I've got drawn on my chart right now or I could get an inside candle which is what I've just drew a couple of seconds ago okay so there you have it alright so we need to wait we need to wait for this today's candle to finish before we can see if we um, if we have anything available for us I can assure you that if there's something there tomorrow and it satisfies what I'm looking for, this would be uh, a trading challenge trade as well. All right, let me move on. Oh, okay, somebody's asking me, what about a selling scenario? So, okay, so let's draw a selling scenario. Let's say that this is the level right there. Well, if this, today's candle closes like this, with that little bit of a wick there that would re be a relatively strong uh, bearish candle and if you're trading the break now I just want to point out on in the challenge I'm not doing the breakout trade okay but if you're trading the breakout then you can trade it right off the bat as such as well okay so yes the sell is uh, on the cards as well but just remember it's got to be a really virtually no wick I don't want any wicks over here alright and the other scenario is it could go down a little bit come back then you find your price action and then
but I don't think that's going to happen until I speak to you next week. That's why I haven't mentioned it. Okay? So, someone's asking a question about the Aussie New Zealand. That was my chart of the day in the daily call today. So, if you watch that, it would be explained there. When I finish the analysis, I'll, I can come back and, and show that to you. All right, Euro USD, let's move on. Okay, these are the lines that I drew on my chart last week. Where were we? We were about here somewhere. And I said, let's wait for it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be ready to party with this. Let's have a look. Oh. Similar to the Aussie, very similar candle formations. What I could expect is maybe this to kick off a little bit there and then the next day give me this candle and then the next day try that type of trade. Okay, which would be basically uh, your fractal will be over here. It will be an inside candle on uh, the bottom of this uh, set of parallel lines. Now, if I was, let's just say we've got the both triggers, the Aussie one and this one, they're slightly correlated, okay? Not 100%, but there, there is a slight bit of correlation. Um, if I had to choose one trade, which one do you think I would choose? What's my number one favorite pattern, the one that seems to, to provide the best probabilities? Which pattern? Do we know? I've got split answers. Half people saying the Aussie, half people saying the the Euro. The channel. There we go. The channel. The channel. The channel is a mu it's it's a much more definitive um, pattern. This one's clearly got one touch, two touches, one touch, two touch. So this is touch three. We spoke about it last week. We were up here, and I said, uh, "All I want to do is wait for it to come down." Now, I did. I got a, quite a few emails. People saying, "Well, if you're going to wait for it to come down, why don't you just trade it down?" Um, well, the answer to that is because I, I don't know if it's going to come down. Okay, and there's no reason for me from this point to trade it down. So all I do is just wait for it. If it comes then I will trade. If it doesn't, well then I'm looking for something different. Okay? So, if I had to choose between both trades, according to my rules, if I didn't have enough budget to take both trades, for example, or I was very, very concerned about the correlation, this one would be the one that I would trade only because the pattern, it's purely based on the pattern, nothing to do with the currencies themselves. Alright? So, Euro... USD, we could have a trigger, I would say Wednesday, could possibly be tomorrow, again for the same reasons, if this turns, oops, that didn't draw that very well, if this turns into like a big engulfing candle, and then you would take it from that point up there, okay, so we need to wait and see, let's see what kind of candle today's one will end up as. All right, there you have it, Euro USD. Let's move on, GBP USD. Okay, so these are the things that I've drawn on my charts. Let me zoom in a bit more. Let me get rid of this one for one moment. And let me zoom in some more. Okay, the trade that I that we hit was this one here. I readjusted the lines. Now, now this is important for me to share with you because I've not touched, I'm on a different platform. Um, I have basically two fully functional offices, okay? Sometimes I do this class from the office that I'm in right now and sometimes I do it from my other office. Uh, so they're different platforms and I, I think the last time I did my class from this one was two weeks ago and this line at the top is a two week old line. Now, I traded this that candle there so to trade that what I did was I readjusted my line to make it fit so can can everybody see that 
sometimes you have to play with the lines and because that pattern is a reversal pattern in itself that's what gave me confidence in taking the trade okay so a readjustment I've just zoomed in you can see my entry level is this red line there which was the break of the inside can candle my original stop was up here somewhere my, my target one was there somewhere I hit target one and now I've moved that stop to a break even point this line you see on my chart here is my T2 alright so that's the explanation so let me so technically this chart it's going to be hard for me to find the trade because I'm in a trade and I'm in a what my eye sees is a very good looking trade it's a nice triangle touch one touch two over here we got one two and this is touch three and it's moving down and you can see that my target is in front of where I think the, the support will come in at so I'm very very happy with the way that's looking um, so I'm not going to touch this if who's in this trade can I just get a show of hands I just want to see who's in, who's in this trade it just allows me to, to see if, where you are psychologically or what, what level you are um, in terms of your, your trading experience okay I've only got two, two people only I've got Rav and Richard. Is anybody who who took the trade but is already closed out? You may you may have closed out at uh, at your first target. Okay, I've got one that closed out. Okay, probably about five of you. All right, if you're in the trading challenge tonight, I'm putting something special for you, and I'm going to send you an email um, just just to see where you're at. Um, so you, you'll get something from me probably tonight or tomorrow morning okay alright so GBP USD well we leave this one alone like I, I, there's, I can't there's nothing that I want to do here other than you know wait to see if my second target is hit okay alright let's move on US Yen let's see this chart I drew this last week we haven't come down to it let me just reassess a little bit Give me one moment. Don't like it. Oh. Let me just get rid of these lines for one second, see if I can find something better. You can also trade the falling wedge. It, I don't think this is going to look as good, but let me just see what it looks like. Either way, I'm not in a position where I can pick up a trade. This is a falling wedge. You can see that these two lines are not parallel. Um, and if I zoom in, look, the first trade that I would be looking for here is up here. This is the first trade that I would be really looking for. Uh, I kind of feel that we've bottomed here. So if it pushes, if it comes back down again here, it may just fall further so the only trade that I really want to look for over here is this one okay so let's wait to see if it comes up to us if it does let's look for the price reversal action uh, pattern and, um, and let's see if we can if we can take a trade there okay so that's the US yen euro yen oh this is an excellent one this is a really good example remember last week I was telling you guys I think the, the candle was over here somewhere 
and I said I'm going to draw this line in but I don't know if this line is at the correct level. Does anybody remember me saying that? And I said I may have to readjust it so it would be very aggressive for me to take a trade right now in this direction. However, if you got the price action reversal, you could be justified. In any way, in any case, we didn't get any price action and it's moved down. So technically now, I still don't know if this is the floor or not. But it could be, but it could not be. Alright, so let me just try something different so first of all I want to move these looks like they might be parallel lines now let me just try yes they are okay so this pattern just got better for me I'll just make the adjustments that I need Okay, so the way that I look at this pattern now is at the very worst case, this top line is has got many touches, so this is a really good kind of support line, okay? We're, we're at a second, this is only touch number two, okay? So, but it is parallel lines, which is different to me drawing a line at this angle. So, a second touch on parallel lines with price action is a lot better alright so let me zoom in and let's see if we can possibly get a trade here okay at the moment at the moment if these candles finished exactly like they are right now I have both an, a body engulfing and I have an inside candle okay so if tomorrow this is what they look like, you're ready to take a trade here. If tomorrow this one pushes a bit more and finishes up there like this and has a little bit of a wick or something like that, that's that would be a body engulfing. So that's also tradable right off the bat. Alright? So this one could be could be ready tomorrow. Alright, so put this one on your to look at list, Euro Yen daily. This one could be ready to trade tomorrow. A couple of questions, give me one second. Uh, Lois is making a statement, if it stays inside, uh, it will make a fractal tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be a fractal over there. As long as we don't come lower than that level, there will be a fractal there tomorrow. Okay, so it's basically with this particular one tomorrow, you just got to look. Look for two things. You can either just take the body engulfing part, as long as it, it is engulfing, or the other possibility is that it could be an inside candle. So those are the two things you got to look out for. I will be looking at it tomorrow morning anyway myself. So if I see it, I will um, I will tag it. All right. Okay, let's move on. That that was pretty easy. Euro yen, Kiwi dollar. All right, last time we spoke, Kiwi dollar was over here somewhere, and I said I gotta wait for it to come back down. We still have not got there, but we're getting closer. So until I get here, I have zero interest on the Kiwi dollar. Okay, so right now, pretty simple chart. This one. And the answer is just leave it alone. All right, we got to wait. Okay, moving on. US CAD. US CAD. Just give me one moment. Let me just look at a couple of things. Okay, US CAD, 
my first interest is going to be over here and I'm going to be looking for this or this on this particular one okay um, so the reversal is easy I mean it's what we what you've seen we're looking for inside candles and golfing candles hanging man I uh, saw a shooting star etc and the break of the line we're looking for a big strong a bull candle to break it cleanly um, and let's see what can emerge from that but that's the earliest that I can see anything not interested in anything else at the moment until I get to that specific point in time give me one second I just get the feeling we might have a little bit of divergence here I just want to just check something No. Okay. Let me just redraw that line so that I remember. Okay. Let's have a look at gold. <coughs> Oh, there's a really weird looking chart. We took our gold trade last week. Oh, it was a chart of the day trade, I think. Um, it was based off these candles there. It did shoot down, then went up. So I don't know if anybody took it. I don't think it made T1. It got pretty close. Um, I didn't. Uh, I, I was going to take it as a trading challenge, but it's gold, so I didn't. Um, I didn't have enough, um, there was, oh, the, because of the sizing for gold, it's a little bit bigger than normal, so if you're not used to it, take a couple of demo trades and get comfortable with it before you attempt at anything. Alright, so what do we have right now? This is a really, really not pretty chart, to be honest. Let's just, I, I need, I need, I need gold to move out of this area. I just want to get out of here. Once we start to move away from that area, then I'm, I'm interested in the trade. It's just, it's uh, zigzagging, it's breaking through, it's it's just not doing what I feel like it should be doing. So just let's leave it and have a look uh, next week. WTI. What have I got? WTI. It would be really, really good if this can push towards up here because then this is going to give us a really good shorting opportunity, um, this particular one here. So, but right now where we currently are right now, there's, there's just no point in taking a trade because there's, there's nothing there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to wait until it gets to that 54 level and then from there we'll see if we can pick up a, an opportunity to sell. Okay. Alright, any questions please type them in. Let me just go back and review. There are a couple of questions there. I will answer them in one second but let me review what we've done. Aussie dollar, we believe we could be at a supportive level. We need to wait to see what today's candle ends up looking like. Um, and possibly tomorrow's to trigger into Wednesday. Euro USD, it's a similar story, but it's a much nicer pattern. We are inside a set of parallel lines and we're in a channel, so we need to wait for the current candle to finish um, and possibly uh, Tuesday's one as well to trigger a trade on Wednesday. GBP USD, we are currently still short, so we're not doing anything, we're just uh, we're waiting and hopefully this trade develops and pushes towards our ta second target. US Yen, it's a little bit of a, a falling wedge, um, but we're too far from the edges, so we're just waiting to really to get to the top side before we're, we're interested in trading this one. Euro Yen, we are at a developing channel. 
this is probably the most likely one we could have our trade set up tomorrow we could be buying euro yen tomorrow all right so keep an eye on that kiwi dollar we're still waiting to come down to the support us cad we need to wait to go up to the resistance gold is the horrible chart we're leaving it and oil is possibly developing a good shorting opportunity for us at this resistance level all right let me tackle some of these questions US Swiss someone's asking me to have a look at the US Swiss let's have a look at the US Swiss then the question is could I sell off the current levels is the question let's have a look Okay, so we have a, a resistance line. It seems okay. The, the line seems okay. Uh, you would have to wait for uh, a candle, a, a price action reversal pattern before you got your, your sell instructions. Okay, um, this one's highly correlated to the to the Euro USD. So essentially, we're, we're we will still be picking up the trade on another pair but do you still need to wait for a couple of candles on that one cad yen let me see cad yen are we in trend guys what do we think cad yen are we in trend What do we think? Looks like it, doesn't it? Okay, so on the assumption that we're in trend, I can't see, there's no, there's definitely no patterns, alright? Let me just double check here, there's definitely no patterns. So, what you're looking for is, it's one of those situations where this could really just, really drop like a lot of pips, okay? So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to pick off every high to to trade in these directions. That's what we're trying to do. So, but remember, you still need to get a, a price action reversal. So, what could happen is this one could give you this candle today. Tomorrow, it could give you this one. That would lock in a fractal for you, and then the next day could would be your entry into the market. That's an example of what you could be looking at. Someone's asking, is this a double bottom here? Let me see. It doesn't look like a double bottom, to be honest. Um, look, what, the, when you look at this piece of chart, the, the things uh, to, to make it easy for you, just first of all, focus on the fractals on the top side, and then fro focus on the fractals on the bottom side. So if we do the top ones, look at this. I'll just draw them all. Can you see that they're all going down? It's like a staircase. Okay. And then if you look at the ones at the bottom, they're going up. Okay. So it essentially it's classic trend. Oops, sorry, let me draw it. So meaning you got this, it's going lower. It's doing this. Alright, so these are going lower, the lows are getting lower and the highs are getting lower as well okay so for it to be a double bottom I almost need them to be perfect perfect so it doesn't feel like it's a double bottom at all okay well, at least not on this time frame okay let me see a couple of other questions Someone's asking me about the Aussie CAD from today's daily call. Yep, let me just pull it up. 
Aussie CAD. Ignore that blue line there, it's from a different chart, so it's, was it the Aussie cat? Oh, Aussie New Zealand, sorry, sorry. Aussie New Zealand, yeah, I was going to say this doesn't look right. Okay, let's have a look. All right. Okay, so the the chart was basically levels of resistance. Okay, even there's a little one there as well. Breaks through, then pushes off, and the question is, will it do it again? So when we zoom in, we'll see the candle pattern's already spoiled. Um, what I was, what I needed was, I needed, I needed somewhat of a reversal pattern here. It's still not over yet. It could still happen. So what I need, the only pattern that it could be now is, I would need this to finish there somewhere like that. Then you have a little tail here, and then it would be either a body engulfing or it would be a three candle sequence as well. Okay, and then you just shoot it in that direction. Okay, but uh, we need to wait and see. This is one that, that I actually, from a fundamental point of view, I, I kind of like as well. So let's hope it sets up for us. Okay, all right. Any other questions, guys? GBP CAD. Yep, one moment. GBP CAD. Let me look at this. Okay, it's it's behaving very similar to the GBP USD. I could draw a line across here, which basically gives me the same trades as a short. So, if I was trading this, I would possibly be in a trade uh, still. So that means uh, my bias is that I'm still short on it so I can't find any new trades on this particular one right now. Okay, so there you have it. Alright, any final questions? Someone's asking, can you send your, can you, can you guys send me your trading challenge logs? Yes, send it to me in a graphical mode. There's only seven trades anyway. So basically, if you if you go through the modules, one of the modules says how to make a graphical log, because um, then I can see your, exactly where your entry was, and and how I can see everything if you just do it that way. Okay. So if you want to send me a trade to look at after the trade has completed, just do a graphical log of it, screenshot it, put it, stick it into an email and, I, and then it's easy for me to look at it, then I can even draw on your same picture and give you any, fix anything up that I feel was not correct or make any comments on it. Someone wants me to look at the Aussie Yen. Aussie Yen. We kind of know we're on the Aussie Yen. We had that level here, but it, it broke through that, that level there. Okay, so there was a little bit of a trade there. It would have been close, 88, 80, 90. Ooh, it would have just almost hit T1. 
Um, but right now it's broken through, so really if Aussie, what I would be looking for here is a pullback, look for it, and then continuation. Okay? Are there any Thursday classes scheduled at the moment? Look, right now, like, I have, I've just been super, super busy. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you guys more opportunity to get access to me on a, on a Monday. Um, I think I may be changing the format where I might do the first half of the class as the analysis uh, on a Monday, and the second half of the class I'll do... Uh, more work on strategy and, and questions. So um, so then I'm doing one session, even if it's a little bit longer than normal, but then I can I can give you an opportunity to, to get access to myself. Okay, so um, at this Thursday, no, there, there will not be, but um, look, we'll, I'll, I'll make an announcement shortly, probably from next week, we will um, we'll do the, the weekly market analysis, we'll, we'll have it in two halves. Okay, so for those of you who want to stay for the full lesson, and then those of you who just want to come in for the first half, okay? You can still get access to the material um, even if, I, if I'm not doing it live, alright? So don't forget that. You can just ask whoever is your account manager and they'll be able to help you. All right, I think we've just about wrapped up. So I will, um, everybody who's in the challenge, I'll, I'll probably send you guys an email tonight or tomorrow. I just got a lot on, but um, just to see what your progress is. Hopefully you, you, you're, um, you've started to discover some things about yourself. Uh, perhaps it might be the trading style. Does it suit what you, the way that you're, you're, you behave? Your, your personality, you may need to modify things, um, but you'll start to get a feeling of either uncomfortableness with the trades or starting to get comfortable with the trades or, or none of the above. So, But the idea is uh, I'm also keen to see who's actually taking the trades um, just to see how you're progressing. All right. So if there's no more questions, we will wrap up for today. I hope you all have a fantastic trading week. Let me just put back up what the key uh, dates. Where is it? <coughs> Sorry, the key events for the week. There they are. They're all in my local time, which is Australian Eastern Standard Time. All right. So the big, the all the most of the activity happens towards the back end of the week, which is Thursday, Friday, where you have uh, Canada making monetary uh, policy announcements, US and uh, the US, uh, a whole bunch of data, retail, uh, consumer sentiment and CPI, also the Aussie unemployment numbers on Thursday and China trade balance on Thursday. So Thursday, Thursday, Friday is where it's going to really, really heat up. Uh, in the meantime, I think uh, we're, we're being dominated a little bit by what's happening by headline news, okay, more so than data. But uh, there you have it. Keep those on your hot list. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And I um, hope you'll have a fantastic trading week. I will speak to you on the daily call tomorrow, and I'll speak to you for the full analysis next Monday. Have a great week. Bye for now.